is our first lesson in Unit 910. Unit 910 is called Looking for Relationships. So what 910 is all about is exactly that, trying to find relationships uh, between uh, variables or between pieces of data. And specifically, we're going to be using graphs to look for those relationships, for the most part. And we're going to be using a specific type of graph called a scatter plot. So what this lesson is all about here is, by the end of this lesson, we want to be able to recognize and describe relationships that we see in graphs and or tables. We want to be able to identify the dependent and independent variables from a graph or from a table. And we want to be able to graph a relationship using a scatter plot. Before we get into all that, let's just talk a little bit about why we use graphs. And as I sort of alluded to, we are using graphs to look for relationships between the variables in a set of data. And the variables are just the two things that are being plotted. Um, okay. If the points that we see in our graph show a trend or a pattern, then there is some relationship between the variables. And if our graph doesn't show a trend or we don't see a pattern in the points that we plot in our graph, then we can say that there's no relationship between our two variables. So this is all a little bit more clear if we look at a specific example. So in example one here, we are asked to graph the data in the table below. Okay? We've got our table right here with two columns. Now the first question we're asked here, what are the variables? Well, in a table, the variables are always listed in, in the heading of the table. So our two variables here are liters of gas and the cost. Okay. And they often have units associated with them, so the cost is measured in dollars, and liters of gas is obviously measured in uh, liters. Okay. Now, it's asking us to graph this. So let's just uh, go on to the next page here. You've got, you know, you've got a graph down below. And uh, before we do that, we have to think about which axis we want each of these variables to go on. We're going to plot, we're going to have one of these uh, liters of gas on the horizontal or the x-axis and the other one on the vertical axis. Now, which one goes on which? Well, what we have to decide is which variable depends on the other one? Okay. So the way we do this is we think about it in our head. We think to ourselves, do liters of gas depend on cost or does the cost depend on the liters of gas? And which one makes a little bit more sense? Well, I think it makes a little bit more sense to say that cost, what you pay, depends on the liters of gas that you purchase purchase more liters, you're going to have to pay more. So because cost depends on liters of gas, the dependent variable, or the one that depends on the other one, is cost. The independent variable must then be liters of gas. When we're setting up our uh, scatter plot, we're always going to plot our dependent variable um, across the s on the side. Change colors here. This is going to go on the side of our graph, and liters of gas, our independent variable, is going to go along the bottom. So you got some space below, um, and this is also reflected in our table here. In a table, almost always the independent variable is the first thing in the table, and the dependent variable, I'll just put dependent is in the second column. So it's independent and then dependent. All right, let's try putting a graph together here. So we've got a little grid. We want to put um, our independent variable along the bottom. And we want to put our dependent variable up along the side or on this horizontal axis. So we've got to think about uh, fitting all of this data into our table. So I want my graph to occupy most of the space I have available. So let's see, my liters of gas has to go up to 60. So I might choose a scale where I start at 0, obviously, and I go 10, 20. So I go over two spaces for each 10. So each little box here is going to represent um, 5, 5 liters of gas. 
So 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and so on. Okay. And then that's going to be, let's label this, always label these guys, liters of gas along the bottom. And then up the side, we're going to have, I'll just label our other axis here, this is going to be cost. And let's see, cost has got to go up to 75. So, well, let's just go up by, oh, we can choose the same scale. We can go up by 5 every time. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. 60, 70, 80, and we can even squeeze 90 and up at the top. And now we want to um, graph, plot each of these points on our, uh, on our graph here. So let's see, when liters of gas was 10, our cost was 12.5. So I just make a little dot right there. Next one, I go over 20, and then I go up to 25, which is going to be right there. Go over to 30, up to 37.5. And I go, just keep doing this for each one of my points. Let's see, 40 up to 50. Then 50 up to 62.5, which is going to be right about there. And then 60, I go all the way up to 75. Okay. And there's my scatter plot. Okay. Now, this question here asks us, is there a trend in the graph? Well, what we can see is that as we go from left to right, we always read graphs from left to right, we see that the points are all going upwards. So we call this, and we say, yes, there is a trend, there is a pattern. It's what we call an upward trend. And now we're asked to describe the relationship in the data. So we can say something like this. We always want to talk about, uh, when we're describing relationships, talk about what the independent variable or the thing on the bottom is doing, and then talk about how the dependent variable responds to that. So as we go from left to right, in our independent variable is always increasing. So we almost always start off with as whatever our independent variable is, so as liters of gas increases, what is cost doing? Well, cost is increasing. So as liters of gas increases, cost increases. Okay. And there we've described the trend. Now, what is, the, what is sort of the point of doing all this? Well, what we're going to find in the next couple of sections is once you've got a graph like this, if you see a trend in here, you can sort of draw a line on your graph that is sort of going to represent your trend. So the best thing that we can do here is we can actually take a straight line that goes through all of these points. And we can use this straight line to figure out um, some values for things that aren't necessarily on our graph. And we're going to look at this a lot more in the next section here. So I can take a point along this line here. I don't know, I can pick like this point right here, which wasn't in my table, but I know that it represents the same relationship between cost and liters of gas. So this point right here might have the coordinates 42.5. That's on my horizontal axis or my x-axis. Okay, coming down here like this. And on the uh, the vertical, it might be something like, I don't know, 53.1. Okay. Now, what do these two numbers represent? Well, the first number represents a number of liters of gas. Okay, because it's my x variable. My x variable is always on my horizontal axis. What does the 53.1 represent? Well, it's 53.1 along here, so it represents a number of dollars, or the cost for that number of liters. And again, we're going to talk more about this when we take a look at uh, box number C.